We've been hearing a lot this morning about you, the American people, calling your Congress people to say enough already. Finish this debt limit deal, start working on the important issues, start doing the job we sent you to Washington to do. Most folks out there are talking about the economy, of course. Americans putting them back to work. That at the very issue, of course, employment at the forefront of many Americans' concerns. And we've all heard that it's easier to get a job when you already have a job. Today, for millions of unemployed Americans looking for jobs, not only is that true, they believe they're being discriminated against in their job searches because they're not working. CBS News correspondent Elaine Cajano has this report. For nearly 20 years, Michael Westerholm rose through the ranks at postage equipment giant Pitney Bowes in Stamford, Connecticut, eventually becoming director of business development. But in January, his position was eliminated and his search for a new job began. So if you can uh, make it in the early afternoon, that would be great. Now, after sending out dozens of resumes and going on half a dozen interviews, Westerholm is getting restless. It kind of grates on you a little bit. You, you kind of... Uh, Think about it day to day. Well, wh what's my next step? Should I call them again? I called them, you know, six times. Uh, I don't want to be a pest. But he's just one of 14 million Americans currently unemployed and is about to become one of the more than 6 million Americans who've been looking for work for six months or longer. That half year mark is a tipping point for getting hired, according to the National Employment Law Project. There are just a lot of assumptions that get built up around being unemployed and employers or employment agencies really not wanting to take a chance on the unemployed. In a new report, the organization says companies are less likely and in some cases unwilling to hire those out of work for six months or more. It found 150 listings, including this one, requiring applicants to be currently employed, a practice the group considers to be discriminatory. I think that uh, employers might feel that someone who's been out of work for more than six months has begun to lose skills, which could be true for some people, but is certainly not true for most people. The issue has even hit Capitol Hill, where legislation has been introduced that would make the practice illegal. This is un-American, it's unfair, and it should not be legal in America to do that. Michael Westerholm believes employers who immediately dismiss unemployed candidates are missing out. I think that there's a lot of good talent out there and, and for somebody to pass somebody over just because they happen to, you know, be in that position is, uh, is short-sighted. A new reality facing the millions of Americans trying to get back to work. Elaine Quijano, CBS News, Fairfield, Connecticut. And we want to mention that company mentioned in Elaine's report told CBS News that the employment requirement must be a typo and they removed it just minutes later. Joining us now, John Challenger, CEO of the job placement firm Challenger Gray and Christmas. John, good morning to you. Good morning. So what is the downside to hiring someone who's got 20 good years of experience? Well, companies worry now, this is the long-term unemployed. Everybody likes uh, experience, but they worry about your urgency. Uh, they worry about the currency of your skills. They wonder, maybe has inertia set in through this long period of unemployment. And so employers are in the driver's seat right now. It's a buyer's market. They have a lot of candidates to look at. And you can be like a house that's been on the market for a long time. They just say, maybe I missed something that someone else saw. So it doesn't seem fair if you've been out of work for that long yeah, a period of time. How, how discouraging for people who have been out of work for just three or six or nine months for for prospective employers to think that you've lost all your skills and forgotten all that you've done just because you've been out of work for a little bit of time. Well, and of course that's not true. So you've got to, in fact, prove to them that, in fact, that long period of time makes you more urgent. You want that job. You're going to work harder for that company than anybody they'd find because you know what it's like to be unemployed, and you want to fill in the gaps in your resume. So if you've done volunteer work or consulting work, make sure you tell them about that. And maybe it's just that you've been out of work for a while because you decided to take time off uh, to take care of an ailing parent. So you can explain sometimes a gap because you had more pressing personal issues to take care of. John, what would you tell somebody who is sitting back now and saying, you know what, I'm not even going to go search anymore. It's been a year. It's been a year and a half, and no one's even returning my calls. I'm discouraged. Well, you know, it's, it is uh, one of those... Uh, 
periods of time where it's very easy to get discouraged. So you have to bring those people around you who lift you up. You have to stay at it like a full-time job. You've got to fight for your employment. Maybe it means taking a job, a part-time job, or something to get back to work that gets you back in that working mode. Uh, you can keep looking today while you're working. So nothing says you can't take a job that's for less money even, but it gets you back in the picture. What kind of jobs are available right now? Well, there are industries that are really growing. Healthcare is the strongest industry in the country, adding 24,000 jobs on average in the last year. Just in the last month, leisure and hospitality added 34,000 jobs. That, that was a real plus. Uh, energy has been a strong sector right on through with a drive for energy independence. Another, another strong category, just skilled jobs, yeah. professional business services, uh, engineers, accountants, uh, IT workers uh, continue to be hired. And are there any locations around the country that are, little, are more plentiful than others? Well, Texas seems to be the strongest state right now with unemployment nationally at 9.2 percent. Texas is at 8.2 percent. They've added more jobs than most other places. Also, the plain states, the Dakotas, uh, Nebraska, they've had relatively low unemployment. All right. John Challenger, thanks so much. Good to talk with you this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Chris.